So I got the question, why, if you, if, you, if you can't fix the issue is the question, why do I feel better after a chiropractic adjustment? And I say, well, why do you feel better after you take a drug? Because it's dealing with a symptom, but not the cause. And we're going to talk about sacroiliac joint sprains because it's a great example. And then we're going to go into the best posture. And the posture we always talk about, the foundation exercise that you take into every exercise. It's not about what exercises you're doing most of the time. It's about are you actually accessing your core? Because the best exercise is life. It's standing. It's walking. It's moving. It's picking up things. It's doing laundry. You can actually, because like when I work at the office, I'm stretching all day long. When I work on people, I'm lengthening my spine and I'm engaging my core and I'm not using my joints. I'm protecting my joints and I'm creating more balance and not imbalance. So let's look at the sacroiliac joint. So Ooh, we're going to talk about there it is right here. It's a huge joint. These two right here. Two on each side. You got the sacrum bone in the middle, and you got the ilium on the side. So sacroiliac makes sense. So this joint has so much tissue, so many ligaments, and it's it's really got limited motion. There's not so much motion going here. You get some little side to side action when you walk. The pelvis moves a little bit, but most of the movement comes from your femur heads, where they go into the the ball and socket joint right here. So that's where most of the movement is supposed to come from. When people get really uh, imbalanced in, or they get like tucked in, what I see a lot of uh, people get tucked in because their hamstrings are so tight because they, they either they sit a lot or they're resting on their joints. They're throwing their hips forward to rest on right on that sacroiliac joint. So I see a lot of sprains and I see a lot of sprains waiting to happen. It's like those are the little ones where like, oh, I just picked up a pencil or I twisted this way and I sprained it. Oh my gosh, old age is horrible. It's like, is it old age or is it severe muscular imbalance? They're like, no, you'll understand when you get older. I'm like, I understand now because I can see your imbalance. Don't tell me that it's not the problem. So you're saying it's old age, but if you fix these imbalances, do you think you would sprain as easy? And 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 then none, none, none of them take option B. You know, it's always like, ah, it's old age, or it's old injuries, and and they don't want to even try. They don't even want to try. Don't even want to try to see if it fixes the issue. And it's not a big change. It's not a big change. You don't even have to go to the gym. You know, I, normally I say you want to add a five minute routine every morning, you know, because that's so much, that's so hard to do. The little stretches in the morning. You can just change how you're activating your core and lengthening your spine. And it's mostly you just, people just have trouble understanding and picking it up. That's it. And it takes a little time. It does. It's a little tricky. It's a little tricky to engage differently than you're you're used to. Uh, but then you'll notice that you're more protected and uh, you don't injure yourself as much, and you'll have more balance because you're dealing with mainly we're dealing with tight hamstrings, shortened hamstrings that are throwing everything off. So um, back to the sacroiliac joint issue is we'll feel a ton of strain in the shoulders and the neck with this because they pull here and they pull the head up so you're looking up at the sky all the time so your hips have to tuck in you have to tuck in underneath you to level your eyes out so that's going to really round your thoracic area your mid back area so the shoulders roll in forward the head rolls up and then we throw our hips forward to make it appear that that's not the case but it is the case so if you ask your friends like how's my posture it's dr nake keeps talking about my posture it's bad like no girl you look good you look good you look bad i can see when you as soon as you lay on the table because your hips and your shoulders are now forced to be level so if there's abnormal curvature that's when it's going to come out the most and that's when i see a big old humpback whale and and i know you're all wondering those people in the in you see in the grocery store that are like their head their chins are almost touching the floor they got the cane like oh how does that happen what is that is it some degenerative you know, a disease, a disease, it's like an infection, right? It's like a bug that gets, no, it's you and your bad posture, a muscle imbalance. That's where it comes from. I'm sorry to break this to you, but that's where it comes from. That's where, what do you think arthritis is? It's a self-defense mechanism. Your body is locking down to protect your nervous system because your muscles are so imbalanced. 
That's where the arthritis comes from. It could be from an injury, but usually it's injury over time when I'm seeing it in 90% or more chronic cases. I'm not seeing a lot of people injured in sports injuries. I mean, I do see those, but those are the people who come once or twice, three times, and they don't come back until they injure themselves again because they understand they use their core and they're active. You're not abusing chiropractic. They're not coming in week after week after week after year after year to deal with symptoms instead of the cause. And that's what we as chiropractors fail as because we're like, they will need to fix the cause. Well, the cause is muscle imbalance. In a lot of these cases, it's not subluxation. I wish it was beer. It's water. So we got all this tension and tightness pulling the thoracic spine upwards straining the lower back where the sacroiliac joints are so it's like um let's do this example me holding this in my hand bent like this you could do that in quite a while right not bad now if i hold this out fully extended arm ah a little tougher all right now now do that all day that's what you're asking those muscles to do they're working in it you're working your bicep in an overstretched position all day long, it's not going to hold as well as I'm going to be able to hold it here. Because it's shortened, it can do its job better. The same with your erector spinae muscles, which come right off that pelvis, up into your thoracic spine, right past the lumbars. They should, they, they're tight enough that there should be some slight curve in the lumbar spine. With the sway back, we see a huge dip at the L4 to 5 area, right at the bottom here. That's going forward, and the rest of the spine is doing an S to the big thoracic curves because it should be a nice slope. Because the muscles should be nicely tightened, and the abs should be nicely tightened. There's nice balance. What we got is the lower abdominals very tight, lower back overstretched, so it's tucking you in. Hamstrings down here are pulling very tight, pulling you in, tucking that, and then right center of gravity, right on the sacroiliac joint. It's not dispersed anymore. It's all posterior. It's all stuck in the back. Does this cause a problem elsewhere? Yes, it causes a problem in the, in the mid-back. You get arthritis there, your, your mid-back's gonna be overstretched as well. And the shoulder's gonna be round and pulled forward, and then you got upper traps super tight, levator scapulae super tight. Where do they all attach? They attach in the headache zone, attach into the cranial bones and the neck bones. They're pulling you like this, or sometimes they're pulling it flat. And, and this goes as well with like athletic hip and upper cross lower syndrome. I will see a lot of sacred leg joints there too, it's kind of the reverse of all this, but mainly I'm seeing a lot of this posterior pelvic forward hip sway. And you don't have to be posterior pelvic tilt to have forward hip sway. I see it with anterior pelvic tilt as well. Not as much, but I see it. We're all supposed to have a light, slight amount of uh, this is for you chiropractors. We, we do have a little anterior pelvic tilt, normal. So when you see it almost level, don't be like, you're pretty level, it's good. That's probably bad. That's actually posterior pelvic tilt when it's level. So if it's anterior and a little more than anterior, that's when you want. So watch out for those two things. And, and a lot of times we get stuck on the pelvis and physical therapists uh, do this a lot too. We get kind of the tunnel vision and I watch your videos. They're all about this, all about the tilt. It's all about, forget about the tilt. I'm done with the tilt. I used to play the tilt game. I'm done with it. Bring your hips back. We'll get right now, we're going there. We're going there, I'm working, stay with me. Here we are, here we are, driving the hips back. So now, my, as we're really engaging upper abdominals, diaphragm area, that's what we want. We're pushing that back, driving the hips back. And the diaphragm is the one thing that we don't engage a lot because it helps us open our lungs. Because normally we're rounded, we're gonna be breathing shallowly. We talk about that in all the other videos. Now we're upright, the diaphragm's engaging, the upper abdominals are engaging. And I, that's my first step with any type of posture. And I know this is exaggerated. We're exaggerating that the hips are going way past the shoulders. <clears throat> but this is not anterior pelvic tilt because the pelvis isn't tilting. So I don't want to talk about tilt anymore. I'm done with the tilt. Forget the tilt. We'll, we'll talk about tilt later on. Because there's too many videos out there about tilt. And I'm tired of it. <laughs> Get rid of the sway. And then we'll talk about the tilt. There's too many people like, oh, yeah, I should tuck. And they look like a gang gunslinger. Like, oh, I should, I need to tuck my pelvis. And then, like, that's just it's so weird because you're you're getting shorter. If you're getting shorter, you're not solving the problem. You should be getting taller. You should be lengthening. That's opening up the joints. It should make sense to you. So, so 
if it doesn't make sense, don't do it. Right? It should be lengthening, it should be opening up the joints. It should feel good. So when we get into this posture, we can do some exercises back here. Right on back when you do this exercise, you're locking that pelvis down. So the core is very tight. And you're lengthening your upper back. So I saw some fluctuations in my own spine. And when I when I talk sometimes I don't pay attention. You really want to lock your spine. You should feel a little no movement. Should be really getting it engaged. Let's see. Can I bring that up? When you're coming in, everything's locked. I'm driving the hip back. The knees are bent. And when I I'll, I'll push in my hands like that, and I know that my my quads can't go any back. I can't straighten my knees because if I straighten my knees, my butt comes up. See how that tilts? No tilt. Forget about the tilt. Keep it level. This is actually the start of your squat, too. People squat, that's where you should start. That way your knees aren't going to take the hit. A lot of people's knees go out past the toes, and that leads to a lot of problems as well. So once you're here, and then I, I let's just do it open, straight open. Tough, right here. It's a lot of you should not be able to get because what happens when we get here? Butt comes in. It tucks in again, that anterior pelvic tilt and that hyperextension of the back. It's like it doesn't even feel good. It doesn't even feel like a stretch because then I could be like, yeah, keep getting worse. The physical therapist, I don't know why. Uh, I'm doing these for my shoulders, not my lower back. You got to fix the spine. The spine is number one. We're not fixing the spine. That's the problem. We're worried about our knees. We're worried about our shoulders. Got to address the spine. It's the number one thing. And that's why the sacral leg joint sprain is so common. And, and you can sprain any joint, but it, it's baffling that you're spraining this so easily. Such a solid joint, so locked down, and people spraining it all. And sometimes you don't even feel it, but I can go in there. Either if it's really gushy, feels like a swollen, like a bruised apple, there's probably some sort of slight tear in there. It doesn't mean that it's completely torn, it's just, just like you sprained an ankle. When you sprain ankle, lots of swelling, the body's locking it down. It's like, oh, this wasn't good. There's lots of nerves here. I got to protect this area. And you'll notice some certain muscles will tight. A lot of people actually put themselves in the right position automatically as soon as they sprain this because their body's like, oh. So they're walking around. Abs are tight. Um, uh, let's talk about what you can do uh, when you have one because people that are probably watching this I get it, Nate. I'm in pain, though, so can you help me out? Ice. Ice is what you want. You spray and you ice. You don't want to heat because you're already generating inflammation, so you don't want to heat it to generate more inflammation. Some people can spray both. Usually it's one over the other. So usually the tight muscles you're going to find, especially if the one that attaches to the sacrum itself, which we call the piriformis, is often tight on the other side. So don't stretch the side that hurts. Don't heat the side that hurts. And if you do have to heat, heat in the morning. Usually a hot shower helps. It loosens things up. And then once you're moving, that's good because you're going to keep the inflammation down. As long as you're moving, is it, it's there and it's adding a little extra cushion. So there's no bones rubbing against each other and the tissue's not being separated because everything's locked down. Uh, it's uncomfortable for a reason. Your body's telling you something. There's something injured. So yeah, usually tight around the other side. And a lot of people come in and are like, well, you're working on the wrong side, dude. It was the left. It's like, it's tight on the right. I mean, I'm not going to dig my hand into the sprain joint tissue. You have, is that what you want me to do? You want me to push on that? It's going to make you feel better? No, it's already sprained. It's injured. It's like you're coming in for a sprained ankle. Here, fix that. It's sprained. What do you want me? What do you want? <laughs> it's, it's an injured. It takes time to heal. You can put it in a better environment to heal. Um, another good thing for sacral leg joint is a trochanteric belt. Your trochanter is actually part of the femur, and that's just the level you want the belt at. So it's actually at that level, which is if you find the top of your hips, go down, there's the bone, go down about an inch, inch or two, inch and a half, trochanter right there, sacral leg joint right here, so the belt's wrapping right there. And I just had a joint infection from some sort of, I don't know, it was Lyme or whatever, and it was right in my sacral joint. And I wore the belt all the time. I'm, oh, it was, I slept in it. I don't, you're supposed to only wear it for like three hours when you walk, but 
That was a bad infection. Ooh, that was right in the joint. Talk about swelling. So that wasn't a sprain, but man, oh man, that's kind of why I'm on this topic. But yeah, a lot of people with sacral leg joint sprains lately, and it doesn't have to be posterior pelvic tilt. It could be anterior. Um, you could, you, anyone can sprain it. Because either way, you have tension on it. Right? Because we talked about before, it could be that you're posterior and you're tucked in, putting all that pressure on there, or your anterior driving L5 right in there so the sacrum's really pulled up. And that's kind of how what happens is when people get older. This will blow your mind. There's a lot of people start out with the short hamstrings that are tucked in and they have so much pain there. So what do they start doing? Is they start pitching forward like that and then trying to take the pressure off. And then this flattens out the lumbar spine and they just get more and more and more. I'm just trying to take that pressure off because if they come back at this point, oh, 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 sorry, I'm not funny. But you see it, right? Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. I always reserve the right to be wrong. So let's keep watching myself here. So then locking down, we're lengthening the spine, driving the skull away from the sacrum. Don't let those hips come forward. We're over exaggerating the hips back. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's get another view. There's the bad. No, we got, you're like, no way. I don't stand like you do. I see it all the time. I, this isn't even that bad. I've seen worse. Smiling at the front desk. People know. I take pictures. I will take your picture and I will show it to you. I do it. I do it all the time. I don't like it. People know that I'm not a confrontational person. I don't like to get in your face, but this is getting ridiculous. It's so simple to correct these issues. Take five minutes to save your life. Posture saves your life because it's protecting your nervous system. Your nerves are the most important thing in the world. So there we had it. We had the, the hips back. That's all we want. That's all I want. That's all I want, people. Get your hips back. Forget about the tilting. And I'm sorry if I try to confuse you with a little tilt. Sometimes I try to be fancy. Like, you have posterior pelvic tilt. I think you should try to enter it. I get, I get that I, that's my fault. But, like for me, I'm, gra I'm generally anterior pelvic tilt. So what I do is I always lengthen first. And then I'm like, all right, I'm slightly tilted. So I'll just give a little bit. Give a little bit. Don't just ignore that for right now. Just get the hips back. So when I'm working on people, I'm doing that all day. I'm stretching in there. I'm driving back. And, and that just forces me to be lengthened. It forces me to engage my four muscles. My favorite four. Do you know them? I swear I'm not drinking. Neck flexors. We always start with the upper abs, diaphragm area. Then what do we got? The neck, right? The neck should engage automatically. And, and it's not really that there's four different steps because this kind of turns into one. It's just you can double check yourself and you look yourself in the mirror. Look in the mirror, record yourself, do videos. I've learned a lot from watching myself. And even now, I'm like, hmm, there's a little too much uh, anterior hyperextension tilt going on. I better, better check that next time. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. So upper abs, engaging. That forces the hips back. And for you people with a lot of sway, you're going to feel your hip flexors engaging a lot because they're overstretched, they're weak, they're easily sprained. You can sprain those hip flexors too, yes, as well as, oh wait, I guess you, it's a strain, sorry. You sprain a joint, you strain a muscle. My bad. Well, it's, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Tendons are in with the muscle. Um, that's, uh, that's still a strain. That's neither here nor there. It's the same idea. They're getting pulled apart. They're getting stretched longer than they should be stretched. Muscles heal faster, though. Joints and ligaments heal slow. And they take a long time. Sacred leg joint sprain could be with you for a long time. I'm dealing with a patient now. She's in so much pain. It's been like week two or a week or two. And she's you know, just starting to get better. And when people get out of pain, they're like, oh, I'm good now, right? 
No, you still have lots of muscle. You could have horrible muscle imbalance and be on the verge of spraining and feel nothing. You could have pain somewhere else completely in your body. It could be in your neck. It couldn't even be in your lower back. And you, could, you won't even feel it. So a lot of times, and people know this, I'm working on areas you thought were fine. That's because we got to treat the spine as a whole. Next involves a lot. Not always. Sometimes it's more lower back. Lately it's been neck. I don't know. It's the summer. People are crazy. So yeah, first thing, first thing, learn how to lengthen your spine, address your core, and just stand, and then, and then do it when you walk, and then think about stretching. Create a morning routine. Once, once you're doing everything else right throughout the day, that's when you're like, get up in the morning, I know my shoulders are tight, my, I, but I want, still want to protect my lower back. Sorry, I'm going to be low enough so the camera here is freaking out. That's when you want to get your circles going, right? You get everything else right, and you get the circles going. You get the elbows extending, getting the wrist movement. That's what you want. These are example of you can do whatever you want. I don't care. Get some movement going. Be really conscious of your core. Try to keep that what we call like the foundation exercise and driving back. So this is locked down. This is protected. It's what we call anti-rotation. So even if I rotated, my upper body, my pelvis is locked. These bones are the eyes, and they're staying forward. So I don't want to be shifting, because that's when we hurt ourselves, right? When we golf, those golfers, the left-handed swing. So they're always, and they're doing it one side all the time. Not that you're twisting both sides. You're popping your pelvis. I felt it right there. Going one way, shifting that pelvis. So as we... That's part of it. I mean, you can't really lock your hips down that well. I mean, you, you can engage, but yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? That's an example of an example of what are you gonna do? You better be doing everything else right before you go golfing, because there's there's no right way. Well, definitely, there's better ways than than, than probably what's going on. Let's be honest. I don't golf, so but I, but I see you. Those of you who do golf. And yeah, you should do some swings the other way, just like not even hit the ball, just not even move the racket, just swing or get some exercise, know what your weak side is. It's more important that if you're engaged with this type of posture correction throughout the day, golfing's going to be no issue for you. You're not going to have a problem because your body is already prepared because um, you shouldn't be injuring yourself golfing a couple holes do a couple swings that way because you should be doing things that are they're, they're counter to it throughout the week that are strengthening you strengthening your lower back allowing you to handle that it's like when you were a kid and you go on a roller coaster you were fine you know but now they go ah, the muscles they were on the verge already they're on the verge they're so tight so tight so weak tight and weak that, mm. You know, you could look, look out the, you could look out, backing out your car. Ah, ah, oh, old age sucks. No, you suck. It's been fun. Yeah. What else do we got? That's it. That's all I got for you. That was, woo, that was a big circle. But hopefully, you learn that I'm crazy, and you learn something about sacroiliac joints protect them but it's just a symptom a lot of, a lot I mean you can sprain it but it's, usually if you're solid that thing's not gonna sprain very easily it's got that, that would have to be like UFC like or WWE you know thrown from you know that some type of you know I don't know I don't wrestle injury <laughs> not not getting out of your car folks that just it doesn't work that way I, everyone likes to think it works that way. It's just old age. Well, old age comes with muscle imbalance, I guess. And I see lots of people who have corrected that muscle imbalance, and they don't injure themselves. So take what you will. You can you can blame genetics. You can blame old age, or you can try to fix it and be like, "Hey, Nate was right," or "Hey, Nate was wrong." But at least try. Right? Just try. <laughs>